Welcome to the Kia EV6 GT. In my opinion, one of the most confusing yet interesting electric SUVs on the market. This is built on the EGMP platform that is shared with a Hyundai Ioniq 5 as well as the Genesis GV60. The first time we've actually had an EGMP car here at Clear Detailing in the shop today. I'm curious to see what this looks like as far as build quality compared to some of its competitors, say Tesla Model Y, Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen ID.4, and the other EGMP vehicles out there. So today we're gonna to be looking at the exterior fit and finish, seeing how all the panel gaps line up. We're also gonna be taking paint readings on here because this paint absolutely pops. So I wanna see from a detailer's perspective what the paint thickness looks like. Is it consistent? Is it all over the place? And how that's going. We're also gonna be jumping inside because the GT variant of the EV6 gets a ton of upgrades and I'm curious to see what it feels like inside. Before we get started on this, I do wanna make a note, this is a press card. Now, typically what you would think is press cars are well gone through. As you may have seen on this channel before, we've had multiple press cars in here with tons and tons of issues. So I wanna make note of that before we get started, but welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Let's jump into it. So the reason that I kind of find the Kia EV6 GT a little confusing is I wonder who is buying specifically the GT variant of this. So this is Kia's EV6 turned up to 11, 576 horsepower on this thing, all wheel drive monster, kind of almost aimed at a track focused vehicle but with a lot of compromises. So as a daily driver, you have a very stiff suspension. I personally find this thing very, very stiff for kind of what it is. That's just my personal opinion. Inside, we have an extremely nice interior with bucket seats. We'll jump into those later. Now, I am a big Husky guy. And to be honest with you, I spent about an hour driving this bad boy back from Denver, and I was already sore. I would definitely not choose this to drive across the country. Now, if you're a little bit smaller, you may find the bucket seats absolutely perfect. But to me, they are very stiff and very tight. So just in the back of my head, I sit here and think, who is going to be buying a grocery getter with four seats, drift mode in it? It's just really an interesting car. But nonetheless, at $63,000 as spec for this one, you get a lot of machine for that money. But let's start jumping into build quality. This to me is one of the most striking EVs on the market. I find it very, very good looking. I think they went well and above with making something that looks unique and is instantly recognizable. You know, something like Tesla Model 3, you see these everywhere. A very basic looking sedan, if you will, where this thing just looks like it's straight out of the future. My personal opinion, Kia knocked it out of the park. My big question is, I don't really think my personal self of Kia as a very high-end brand, but I'm very, very curious to see how these compare to, you know, vehicles like Tesla's. <clears throat> Tesla has obviously had their build quality issues in the past. I just recently did a video with my dad's Tesla Model 3 performance that I was very impressed with the build quality. I do have to say though, this thing already feels quite a bit more luxurious than something like the Tesla Model Y. I find the interior to be really good. But let's start talking exterior build quality. And on the back here, let's start at the charge port. So really nice integration of the charge port here. I think it's really well hidden. It doesn't immediately stand out to you where it's at, but it also looks really nice. And it is a power operated charge port door. I find that is really pretty nice. Um, it doesn't seem overly complicated. This seems very similar to how Tesla does theirs. One thing I really don't like, and this is something I complain on a lot of EVs, is this charge port cover. So it's got a little tether on here, but it just, it doesn't feel like there's anywhere to put this. And it just sits there and dangles. I mean, it just really does not give you the impression of a premium vehicle. It needs to have some sort of hook here or something. I just, I truly do not like that. 
But on here, which is really cool, we have a charge level indicator. Now we've got this pretty high charge testing out the battery. Something interesting here, I know that's not part of the build quality, but you only get full power on this thing above 70%. So again, talking a little bit of compromise coming out with the Kia EV6 GT, but really nice button here to close the door. Nice actuation, that feels extremely, extremely nice. The back end of the EV6 to me is just one of those that stands out. And that has to do with this huge integrated light bar down here. I This thing to me just looks so, so premium from the back. It looks expensive when you see all the lights down, this light bar going across here. Look how detailed this tail light is. It just looks absolutely incredible. I really, really like that. Now there's a lot going on back here when I you know, consider the rear bumper. We've got pieces everywhere. So we've got obviously our charge port door, another piece here, you know, a plastic piece, this chrome piece, the actual bumper, a bumper inlay, another piece of the bumper, and that I really am concerned, you know, when I first saw this car, wow, that's gonna be very, very tricky to put together. So far what I'm seeing back here, very, very good things. But there's a few things I don't like. So this integrated plastic piece here, to me, look at the panel gaps here. So kind of thick up here, really tight and quite thick here. I just don't understand the purpose of putting these very, very cheap looking plastic pieces. We've got another one down here. Now this chrome bar to the back, in the back looks quite strange to me. To me, it just doesn't match the whole aesthetics of the car. As a detailer, I can't believe I'm saying this, make this piano black. Let me show you something I am very concerned about with this piece. So down here, see how it is kind of cloudy and hazy? This is going to continue to get way worse like that. And this is a press car with only a thousand miles on it. This was actually out at um, Las Vegas Speedway doing drifts and everything. So I really worry about how this is gonna look. Personally, I've actually seen some EV6s already and they look horrible in that regard. So maybe wrapping that would be a good option. But moving on here, everything down here looks insanely nice. Like super, super tight body lines. I don't see any misalignments down here. Now what I do see a little bit of misalignment with is the tail light. And as you can maybe see here, hopefully the camera will focus, this sits up quite a bit, but the panel gap here, really good. Now moving down here, we've got a tight gap here, and then it gets wider here, and then gets really tight. So I think this tail light could use a little adjustment. On the other side here, we've got some similar stuff going on where this sits up quite a bit higher and this is down a little bit, but this looks really, really nice along the side. And moving down the side of the car now, this rear quarter panel is so sleek looking. It gives a very wide impression and it's just such a nice sculpted piece. Now back here, this integrated spoiler I find to be so, so cool. And look at how nice these body gaps are. This is a little thick, but I don't, I think it's intended to be like that. Obviously this moves up, probably need a little space here. But when you're looking at the alignment, look at how precise this is all the way around here. Again, three part spoiler here. We've got these little integrated pieces here, the actual spoiler. And then we've got this piano black piece. It all lines up like two AT, really, really impressive so far. This piano black piece back here, look at the alignment on this, amazing. One thing I absolutely love sitting in the driver's seat is looking out the mirrors and see this sculpted piece on here, really, really cool. It's also got an integrated light in here when you unlock it to kind of illuminate this area. It's really, really cool. And moving down the door here, I am very, very impressed. Look at the alignment here, all bang on, really, really sharp. This just looks fantastic. Now I am seeing over here, there is a little bit of panel misalignment here. This trim piece is, sits down quite a bit more than this one. That's being very nitpicky. Down here, this looks fantastic. To me, it's really, really interesting how many manufacturers have issue with window trim and they all do it differently. And a lot of them have a lot of issues um, with lining those up, but all these seals look really good. They sit nice in everything. Very, very happy to see that. 
This area back here is always tricky for manufacturers. So what you have here are two metal pieces. So your rear quarter panel, your rear door, and then we've got plastic pieces. I famously have seen this on um, Rivians, especially on the R1Ss, where you have pieces here. And every single one of them I see, the plastic piece down here is pushed out. But look at how straight this is. Again, really tight body gaps here. I love to see that. Now moving down the door here, I am seeing some weirdness going on here with this panel. And it only seems to be this panel. We'll check the other side. But look at the ripples in this thing. Looks pretty bad, to be honest. Um, I think what's going on here is we've got clips holding this plastic piece in, and they're actually sucking the plastic in in areas and making this warp. Now this doesn't have it as bad, so not really sure what's going on there. Also, something to know I'm seeing down here, look at the panel alignment here. This door is absolutely sticking out, really tight here, big gap here, but a really nice integrated seal here. It looks pretty darn good. So I'd say down the door here, everything else is looking pretty good. A little bit of panel misalignment there. This piece looks rather wonky and this door needs some adjustment here. Now I am seeing down here as well, this panel is sticking out a little bit on this, um, but look at all these other panel alignments. Also, just looking at this, huge color difference going on there from red to red. Um, maybe that's just the angle I'm looking at it, but that looks definitely quite a bit different. Um, the door here looking really, really nice. I love how they've integrated these fenders in this and how tight those tolerances are on the body gaps. They look insanely good. And the mirrors here are really, really interesting. So this is full gloss black, no kind of that textured black on that. That's actually something I didn't even realize. This car has only one area on it with this textured um, black plastic, and that is in the cowl. Really like to see that. That was something that, um, you know, a lot of cars like our Volkswagen ID4, it has a ton of that. Um, textured plastic on it and I find it very much cheapens the car. I really like having painted arches like this and side skirts. It looks really really nice. To me it gives the impression of a more luxurious car. But these mirrors are really quite interesting here. They almost have this cat ear impression with it. Um, we've also got our integrated cameras in here um, for the 360 camera. But everything here Look at how precise this is. I really, really like what I'm seeing. Now this hood, guys, this thing seems like it is going to be a bear for Kia to manufacture. So far, I'm seeing some good stuff. So this is a full clamshell. If you see, this is one solid piece and look at their alignment on this. I mean, this doesn't stick up whatsoever. Panel gap is absolutely perfect all the way down there. Now it does get um, pretty much the same here. It gets really tight on the headlight. That may be for aero. As you can see here, they've got a little integrated rubber seal, but it's looking really, really sharp. It seems to me Kia has spent a lot of money on their lighting department with this car, making it stand out. And the front end is so recognizable with Kia. And I think it looks amazing. These headlights are really cool how they, this is just a non-used piece, but they've still integrated it in there and it comes all the way around here with this nice little side marker light. Interesting thing to note where they put a side marker here and another one there, kind of strange, but looks really, really good. Now I am seeing this piece down here, does look like it sticks out a little bit more um, on this area, on this little fender. It looks like it needs to be pushed in a little bit. Now, front bumper is not quite as complex as the rear bumper, but the tolerances here are looking pretty good. I am actually seeing here, this little tow hook eye, looks like it's not fitting quite right, but look at how tight these tolerances are. Just looks amazing. All of these just look so, so cool. I think it looks amazing. The front end of this car, again, instantly recognizable. This from a detailing perspective, no, thank you. <laughs> I really don't like that. Um, gloss black. I have a feeling this is going to look quite bad in just a couple of months. But again, up front here, we have the nice aluminum Kia badge. I think it looks fantastic. 
Now moving along the side, let's see how everything's lined up over here. So I am seeing on this clamshell a little bit that we've got some alignment issues. So it's a little tight down here, as you can see, and then up here, it definitely expands out. So that's more what I really expected from this hood, maybe on the other side. So it looks like it needs a little bit of adjustment. Let's check this panel here. And this one's looking a lot better than the passenger side. Really, really cool. It's so moving down here. Again, really nice gaps. I just love how tight they made all these tolerances looking really good. Not having the same issue down here that we were on the other side, but still noticing that color difference. I think that may just be a reflection, but the side piece looks pretty good, but I can come in and see these warping areas. So those clips are playing havoc with this and something that is gloss black like that is going to really, really show it and look quite bad. Let's see how this back one looks. Actually, the back one here looks quite a bit better than the other side. So that piece over on the other side may be an issue for them. And as it looks, I am seeing that this panel alignment here is a lot better than the other side. So a few things going on on the other side. This panel looked horrible on the other side. The front door was sticking out and we had this kind of front flare sticking out quite a bit. Now over here, I am seeing a little bit of misalignment here as well. This is being very nitpicky, but when you have straight objects like this and one is slightly off, you can see how um, kind of frustrating and annoying that can be. So a little bit of stuff going on. That's something I see though on every single manufacturer. It still blows my mind to this day that we can't get these little plastic strips dialed in. But down here, this looks pretty darn good. This one sticks out just slightly, but moving down the door looks amazing. Very, very happy to see that. Now, this back here still looks pretty good, but I am seeing down here slightly wider gap than it is up here. So I think that's probably with these integrated plastic pieces because this door actually looks pretty good. Actually, as I say that, I'm feeling it here. This door is inset compared to this rear part here, and I still notice it here. So interesting stuff going on, but spoilers looking really nice again on this side and moving back here to the quarter panel. Yeah, everything's looking really pretty good. I do want to check the glass while I'm up here. I know that's something vehicles like that back there, Rivian have had issues with how this glass sits. What's interesting about the EV6 GT, so they kind of make this their track car right but we have a powered roof but then we have bucket seats with no power on them to save weight or maybe to make the seats lower i think that's probably more what it is but look at how precise this is here let me just come show you here on the rivian um, an issue that i see quite often with these roofs look at how much that piece of glass sticks up over there that looks pretty terrible to be honest but over here on the Kia, it is looking really, really good. A um, few other things I wanna point out on the exterior of the vehicle. Something I really like, the center cap is more of a hexagon shape. I have never seen that on any car before. Typically they're just circles for the center cap. I think that looks cool. My opinion, these wheels look really, really nice. I love the acid green accents. Personally, would not get this car in red with the acid green. It gives me very much Grinch vibes. But overall, guys, very, very pleased with the outside build quality on this. I mean, being very, very nitpicky, there's a handful of things here, but I am really, really impressed. So now let's move on to paint readings. And for your paint detailing nerds, it is time to do paint readings. So, what this tool does, see we have a metal tip here on the bottom. It is measuring the distance from that tip sitting on top of the paint down to the metal. So that's measuring your you know, base coat, your color coat, your clear coat. And I want to get a rough idea of how much paint is on this. Typically what I see on new vehicles is between four to six mils. Something like my Tesla Model 3 sitting over here has around seven to nine mils in areas because of how they do their multi-coat white. I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of a thick paint um, because of the pearl effect on this, but let's see what we have here. 429, it's a reasonable amount of paint. 
510. Okay, that's a really good amount of paint. 415. Let's go here above the Kia badge. 368, so a little bit lower there. Okay, so we had over 5 mils and 368 there. Let's go center of the hood, almost 5 mils. That's a fantastic amount of paint to work with. 385. Okay, so this lower area here definitely looks a little bit lower to me. Um, very consistent actually with what I've seen on Lucid um, when it got to the point I couldn't even polish on the car. Almost five mils there, great. So you guys gotta think, when they're painting vehicles like this, a really hard edge like this is gonna have the least amount of paint on it, and then in these valleys, you're gonna have a lot more paint settling there. Um, so again, that's what I look for when I'm taking readings like this. When I'm buffing on these cars, I wanna ensure that they have not only enough paint, but consistent paint, and I don't wanna get to an area that looks quite poor. Six five one. So that's our biggest reading down there, nearly six and a half mils. Always like to see right above the door handles here. Five ten. Great amount of paint. So let's see down here if this is going to be the same. Really thick. Nope. Four two nine. Four six six. Five seven. So. A little bit inconsistent, to be honest. Um, it's not massively inconsistent, but definitely some stuff going on here. Moving to the back door here. Five, four. Man, I wish we had that much paint in all of the areas. That's a great amount of paint to have. Okay. Curious to see what this panel back here is looking like. So this panel up here, yep, this is plastic here. This is metal and metal, ooh, a little bit lower. Okay, so the roof is actually a little bit lower, kind of more than I anticipated. Now, let's see back here. I believe this is probably all plastic back here. What about this piece? Okay, so that's plastic piece, plastic. Okay, so this is metal back here. So it definitely seems like this bottom trunk lid piece and the roof are definitely a little lower in areas. Come back up here on the roof. Anytime I get a three in front of it, it always makes me a little bit anxious. I definitely would like to see a lot more paint. Um, you definitely can polish in the threes, like high, high threes, but I get very, very conscious when we start getting low threes. And we'll finish up with this last panel. Okay. So, overall impressions, um, a little bit of variance in the paint, um, honestly a little thin in some areas. It's not as bad as I've seen on other cars. I would say guys, this is pretty average as it comes to paint. Now talking texture in the paint, I actually think it looks quite nice here. Um, we do have a good amount of orange peel, but it seems to be relatively consistent. Actually on the video with my dad's Model 3 Performance, he had quite a bit of variability in the orange peel, but I would say it looks pretty darn decent. You can see in the lights down here, um, a good amount of orange peel, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Overall, exterior of the vehicle, I think this thing looks stunning. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty darn blown away with the build quality. I think they've knocked this thing out of the park. I mean, this is totally tolerable. I don't see anything that I am like super, super worried about other than this plastic piece down here. I think a lot of stuff like on the doors that can all be kind of fixed if you took it to Kia. I'm personally not really sure of how receptive they are to fixing things like that. 
you know, with cars like Tesla, that happens a lot. Vehicles like Rivian's take them back in, get panels adjusted. I'm not sure how Kia dealers deal with that. So that may be something to consider. But anyways, let's jump inside the Kia EV6 GT. Boy, oh boy, do I have lots of thoughts and feelings on this. Now, I'm gonna give you a lot of my opinions and you may disagree with that and that's completely fine. I'm just giving you my impression as I'm around cars a lot. First off, Kia knocked this interior out of the park. It looks incredible. What I really question is their material choices and we're gonna get into that. So let's start over here on the door panel. So we've got a decently soft touch, more of a vinyl material up here. I think this is completely acceptable. I think that's gonna wear quite nice. It also looks very good. I like this integrated handle, a really good door release handle aligns up really well. Where it starts to fall apart for me, more gloss black, high impact area. You're gonna be touching this all the time, getting your fingerprints all over it. Look at this down here already. OEMs, why are we still using all gloss black in high impact areas? We've got plastic switches here. They do feel completely fine. Um, I do really, really like this Alcantara or suede, I think as Kia calls it. I love suede in cars. I think it looks premium, but this again, where it starts to fall apart. This material from a detailing perspective, in my opinion, is one of the hardest um, textile materials to take care of in a car. It wears really weird, it holds oil, and it is very, very hard to clean. So we've got a high impact area here covered in it, and I think this is going to look quite poor over time. Now, what looks quite poor to me is the bottom of the door. I think the top is okay. I think there's some areas, again, we've got high impact areas, gloss black, the suede, but when you move down here, you've got the nice Meridian sound system, a nice metal feeling grill here looks good. And then you have this, and it is nails on a chalkboard, cheap plastic. This looks horrible in my opinion and feels horrible. Also in here, we've got a extremely cheap feeling material. This feels like something that would be under the rear trunk liner in this car. Now, moving along to the seats. I've got a lot to say about these seats. So first off, like I said before, I'm a big dude. I know that, but I really do not fit in these seats. I kind of sit on top of the bolsters a little bit. Um, I just, to me, they're way too much for an SUV. They are really hard. They're not, like this material down here really does not flex when you're sitting in it. You feel a lot of pinch points in it. And a couple other things. We have only manual adjustment here, no power seats. I think there's a few reasons for that. I think that is to get the seat low because this really has a low headliner in this, like it really swoops down. So I think they're trying to save space with that there. My personal opinion though, get an SUV with normal seats. You do not need racing buckets in an SUV. I just, to me, it sounds kind of crazy. Now, speaking of the suede material, so we've got it all here on the seat. Again, this material's a pain in the butt to clean. So if you put kids in your car, highly do not recommend having these seats. I just, to me, not gonna wear nice. Also some things I'm noticing here, the stitching is definitely not very straight. You can see it wobbles there. The piping here looks like it's very warped. I think the seats, again, look aesthetically cool. Just not my preference. Um, floor mats, I know it's a weird thing to make a comment about, but these look really nice. This is like what you find in Range Rovers, that same kind of textile material. They're kind of a pain to clean, but I really, really like the look of them. Now, another material that's really interesting in here is this. It's along the whole dashboard around the screens there. To me, what it seems this is, is some sort of cloth and then almost this pattern screen printed, kind of like a t-shirt. Um, so I wonder how this is gonna wear. And speaking of wearing, especially on this, this to me, it already looks like some of these are starting to peel up. I think you're gonna see EV6 GTs with a huge hole of these, all these strings peeling off. I think this is going to look horrible, horrible, horrible just in a little bit of time. Now. Again, moving to this area, we've got more gloss black. This in two days is going to be filled with scratches, fingerprints, everything. Every 
area you touch on this, high impact areas, it's just not gonna look good. Why not just make this aluminum here? I know it looks good for two seconds, but after that just looks horrible. Now, something I really, really like about the EV6, especially at night, I hope the camera's not freaking out, but the integrated lighting in here, all this acid green color, if you will, it just looks so, so cool. What I like that they've done here, and I've complained about this in the Nissan Aria, is they have these cut out vent pieces here. Anytime you'd move it up, it would completely warp this. So you'd have a straight line and then it's like tilted that way, facing up, not aligned right. This looks way better. So you can actually move your gauges around, but really, really interesting interior. One thing that I think looks horrible down here is this plastic. Look how cheap this looks down here. Now I know you're not seeing that all the time, it's a cubby bin, but I think they could have done a lot better to make it look quite a bit nicer. Um, I just find that material to be somewhat the same. We do have a nice ambient light here. Just don't really think it's that premium. Next, I wanna hop over to the driver's seat, talk about that steering wheel. So lots of interesting stuff going on there. So hopping over here to the driver's side, I wanna point something out. I'm already seeing lots and lots of wear marks on this bolster here. You kind of see how it's like, you know, wrinkling up here. It's because every time you get out of this, you kind of have to sit and turn on this bolster. It's really not a comfortable situation for it. Again, I just, the seats look cool, but just make them more comfortable. Like you're not taking this thing to the track unless you're crazy, which good on you. I think that's awesome. Now, popping inside here, I love the feel once you're in here. The seats, again, not one of the things I love, but a very, very spaceship vibe, feels very modern, but it also feels like a cockpit, how everything's right here. Once you close the door, you feel nice and sealed in, and yeah, you feel like you can just go and go and go. The thing I really hate are a few things in this interior. One is the steering wheel. I think it looks goofy. I think the functionality is weird of it. Um, so a few things here. I really don't like this kind of single mono two-tone thing. This feels very thick. Um, the steering wheel does feel nice up in this area. I do like the lime green accents in here, but the steering wheel to me just looks, I don't know, it looks kind of boring. It looks yokish with the top part. I just, I don't know, I think I think it looks strange. That's just my opinion. I have hit the horn literally probably 10 times on this. Um, when I turn, you know, driving like this, the horn just goes, it's so easy to press this even on the side instead of like really having to get after it. But that being said, they're using nice materials in here. Again, this aluminum piece, this is like the nitrous button, if you will. This is your GT mode. It's cool how it's just bam, it's right there. You're in GT mode and go few things on this wheel that I've noticed. So, of course, we've got more gloss black here. Same thing in our Volkswagen ID4. Very similar in this area as well. Also really like where this um, wireless charger is. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, but yeah, some lots of gloss black on here. And talking he heated steering wheel, some interesting stuff going on here. It has like hot and cold spots like crazy. Hot as can be up here like medium and then like ice cold right here in the middle. And what makes it even worse is this integrated piece of metal because metal makes things cold. You put your hand on it when it's chilly outside and it's like, it's just all this is kind of freezing in here. I really, really don't love that. Speaking of another thing I don't love, and this is something uh, a lot of people complain about in this car. This is not only your air conditioning switch, but your volume knob. So right now it's programmed as your AC, heat and low, it's gonna kick on here. But if you hit this button, it now turns into your volume button. So say you get in the car um, and you need it really warm and you just immediately stay on this one. Let me see how I do this. And you just go, bam, you are cranking the speakers to 11. And uh, yeah, that may freak you out a little bit. My personal opinion on the screens here, I think as they sit right now, they look a little cheap feeling in the daytime, how there it's just, bright white. I personally like them when they're black, but then they're hard to see in the day. I think they look a lot better at nighttime. Um, just my personal opinion, how they do all the icons and everything in here, all the like lettering, I just find it to be ugly, to be honest. And I also think that the screen is very much not intuitive. Like you're diving deep into menus to figure out how to do anything. I don't know. To me, it just doesn't have that 
premium feel like the rest of the interior does. I think the, the rest of the interior does feel really, really good. Other than areas like, you know, the door panel down there and then this integrated center console area. But let's hop into the back seat and see how things are feeling back there. So back here is where things start to feel really, really cost cutty. So first of all, back here, this material now turns into a material like this. Listen to this. Oh, that's horrible. I'm sorry. Horrible. Again, same thing here. This terrible, terrible plastic. And then look at these rear seats. I mean, they are literally flat. There's no bolstering here. Again, I know I'm complaining about the bolsters up front, but like if you were taking this thing around and have somebody in the back trying to do skids sideways, they're gonna be flying across this. What I also think is really interesting back here, of course, this is an EV, you're sitting on top of the battery, flat floor. It just looks awesome, but still manual seats back here. Um, really, really nice actuation there. This carpeted material feels horrible back here to me, feels very, very cheap. Um, but I, I really do like this car, guys. I think the interior for me, it's just down to material choices that I really don't like. Aesthetically, it looks incredible. Um, really, really does. Let's pop back here. Really nice and smooth actuation on that. Look at how much room you have in here. Does feel quite good in here. Um, these areas, again, that cheap plastic you're feeling on the doors, um, doesn't feel the nicest, but you're not gonna be, you know, really touching these areas every single day. So I think that's quite acceptable. I just find some of the materials in the back and how they've done this rear seat to be really weird. It's just so flat. This feels atrocious, I'm sorry. But this is something all your passengers are gonna be touching and it's just, uh, nails on a chalkboard. I also think this looks very cheap back here, how this um, center console piece comes back. It just doesn't look super nice, but I gotta say guys, I really like the EV6 GT. I know I have some complaints about it, but I have complaints with a lot of cars. No car is perfect. I'm just pointing out things that I see. I work on a lot of different vehicles and uh, I, I find things interesting and my opinions are my opinions. You may disagree with me and that is completely okay. That's why it's cool to have all different types of EVs in the market so you can buy the one that fits you the most. Um, I really like the EV6 GT though. I think for the price point, you are getting a ton of car. You're getting a very, very well-built car. And I think you're getting a cool looking machine that's unique, you know? It's not like a Tesla sitting on every corner. I think it looks fantastic and yeah, really, really excited. Love the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, check this thing out and, uh, very curious to spend some more seat time in this thing to see how it feels. But if you guys have any questions for me, wanna know what you think of the Kia EV6 GT, what other cars would you like to see me do a build quality on? Leave comments in the links below in the description. And as always, we'll see you in another one very, very soon. Thanks for joining us on another out of spec detailing video. Bye-bye.